the first step um, when we talk about compulsive eating or bulimia is to reduce the anxiety. So we're back to the breathing again, we're back to the basics, and we're back to filling your pockets. We don't want eating to be an anxiety provoking place. So we have to break the pattern. We have to break it. When we're anxious, we know from um, research that the part of our brain that shuts us, turns on is the limbic system, better known as the old part of the brain. And the part of our brain that shuts off is the neocortex, which is the part, the thinking part of our brain. So I think step one is to reduce the anxiety. So a breathing strategy like I showed you before would be very helpful. Any kind of relaxation strategy would be very helpful because if you're in a relaxed state, you're much more likely to feel better sitting down at the table. Furthermore, that breaks the pattern because when you have a problem, you have a pattern. If you're a drinker, you take out the right wine glass, you get it all set up. Same with eating, there's a pattern. Maybe you didn't eat breakfast, you deprived yourself all day and now you're starving and here you go. You can't set yourself up. If you set yourself up, you're gonna fail. So we need you to change the pattern a little bit and change things around. Again, this is where a therapist can make a plan with you to make it more comfortable for you. But let's not forget the role of anxiety in all these things. People who suffer with compulsive problems and with bulimia have tons of anxiety and tons of issues around the issue of control. So we want to empower them. We want them to feel good about themselves before we even touch the food issue. So that would be a psychoeducational seg segment, understanding their bodies better, understanding the breathing strategy, how to relax, the basics in life, filling your pockets, what brings you joy in life. Maybe food's the only thing that brings you joy in your life. That's a problem. Let's work on that. Then we break the pattern and you'd be shocked at how effective this is. As long as the client is on board, we have over a 95% success rate. We lose people who are not quite ready or fall into the victim. And that's something we always have to screen for. There are people that get um, what we call a perverse pleasure out of being a victim. And those are tough cases because if you wanna stay in the victim role, the best therapist in the world can't help you. So you also have to recognize how are you getting a payoff from staying unwell? And there are payoffs to staying unwell.